after studying this module you shall be able to understand the importance of radiological and magnetic imaging techniques understand the basic procedure advantages and limitations of these methods get a holistic understanding of how these methods of investigation may be useful in case or psychological disorders the study of neuropsychology involves the efforts of scientists in many disciplines including physiology neuroanatomy biochemistry psychology history and endocrinology pursuing a research approach in behavioral neuroscience requires competence in many experimental techniques an enormous and bewildering array of research methods is available to the investigation for the purpose one such method involves radiological techniques November 8, 1895, German physics professor Wilhelm Conrad Röntgen discovered the X-ray and noted that while it could pass through human tissue, it could not pass through bone or metal. He received the first Nobel Prize in physics for his discovery. The medical specialization on in radiology or the use of X-ray grew over many years radiology is used to image the body and the brain to diagnose as well as to treat the disease it includes an array of imaging techniques such as x-ray radiography computed axial tomography also known as cat positron emission tomography pet and magnetic resonance imaging MRI etc the radiologist then interprets or reads the images and produces a computerized report of his finding the radiological imaging methods of investigation involve the following radiological methods which comprises of structural neuroimaging and functional neuroimaging the choice of methods depend upon the nature of investigation as well as the suitability of the method with the condition of the patient structural neuroimaging as the name suggests structural neuroimaging generates images of the static structures of the brain a few examples of the current technologies used for this are the computed axial tomography scan and the magnetic resonance imaging computed axial tomography in cat scan the patient is made to wear the tomography it is covering over the head much like a helmet it is donut shaped inside the tomography on one side there is an x ray source fitted it is used to emit x ray beam to the patient's head on the other side of the tomography there is an x ray detector fitted These two devices move around the structure and record x-ray from multiple angles. CT scan uses a computer program that performs a numerical integral calculation, the inverse radon transform on the measure x-ray series to estimate how much of an x-ray beam is absorbed in a small volume of the brain. The result is a black and a white 3D image showing depth and structural differences. Traditionally, CT scan image only in axial slices. However, recent helical or spiral CT scanners allow for three-dimensional imaging by stacking two-dimensional slices. Higher attenuation, the denser tissue results in whiter pixels and lower attenuation results in darker pixels for example cranium will appear very white while the less dense brain will appear in varying shades of gray the cat scan are less expensive than most other techniques they are also less expensive 
The cat images, however, have poor spatial resolution as the range of X-ray absorption is small between tissue types. It does not allow sharp differentiation between structures. The CAT scan have been the technique of choices in many conditions. They have been used to detect infarction, tumors, calcification, hemorrhage and bone trauma. Of the above, hypodense that is the dark structures can indicate edema and infarction. Hyperdense bright structures indicate calcification and hemorrhages and bone trauma can be seen as dysfunction in bone windows. Tumors can be detected by the swelling and anatomical distortion they cause by surrounding edema. Magnetic resonance imaging MRI Structural MRI uses hydrogen atoms found in the water molecules of brain tissues to measure the density of neural structures. The MRI scanners use strong magnetic fields and radio waves to form images of the body. The scanner has two magnets, one large and consistently on and the other smaller that turns off and on, emitting variable waves to create a pulse sequence. The bigger magnet serves to align protons in hydrogen molecules towards the magnetic field and the second magnet disrupts the alignment. In this disruption is contained the quantum physical information of the shape and makeup of the tissue around these protons. The MRI records these data and uses them to reconstruct an image of the brain through intricate algorithms. By using the technique of MRI, excellent spatial resolution can be achieved. It is sharper than that achieved by using any other method. It allows for greater differentiation between tissue types as well as the structures in the brain. It is also safer for the patients since the use of radioactivity is avoided. The invasiveness is also minor. There are some problems related with the use of MRI. The MRI image is susceptible to movement artifacts and requires accurate calibrations of head positions from the neurologist and absolute stillness from the patient during scanning. Further, images are recreated from radio waves emitted by only a sample and not the entirety of protons in the brain tissue. Thus, MRI scanners are said to be less sensitive than other imaging techniques. In clinical practice, MRI is used to distinguish pathological tissue such as brain tumor from normal tissue. The MRI is the investigation of choice for neurological cancers as it is more sensitive than CT for small tumors. The contrast provided between grey and white matter makes it the optimal choice for many conditions of the central nervous system including D diseases involving demyelination of neurons, dementia, cerebrovascular diseases, infectious diseases and epilepsy. They have also been used to understand the pathological neural patterns behind certain non-organic disorders such as schizophrenia. It is frequently used in the diagnosis of diseases with prominent anatomic abnormality. It is also used in research to find if there are structural brain differences in psychopathology, example decreased volume of hippocampus in post-traumatic stress disorder, decreased volume in regions of the temporal lobe in schizophrenia. Functional neuroimaging. Functional neuroimaging is the visualization of neural activity in specific brain areas in relation to particular mental functions, 
this includes positron emission tomography pet single photon emission computed tomography spect and functional magnetic resonance imaging fmri one way to scan the neural functions of the brain is simply to have the participant resting without engaged in any cognitive task this is called the resting state the imaging aims at differentiating between neural activity in various conditions such as rest cognitive engagement and pathological dysfunctions positron emission tomography pet this technique is aimed at recording the signal from the interaction between an unstable nuclear isotope called a radio tracer and the other particles in the brain the system detects pairs of gamma rays emitted indirectly by a positron emitting radio nucleide which is the tracer which is introduced into the body on a biologically active molecule one common radio tracer is fluoroxyglucose fdg a radioactive molecule that is much like glucose and thus is treated similarly by the brain in this method fdg is injected in a patient through the vein the radio tracer follows the path of glucose and decays at a known rate emitting a positron that collides with an electron in surrounding tissue and generates two photons gamma rays that travel in opposite direction out of the patient's body detectors positioned around the patient pick up the intensity and source of the gamma rays more highly activated neurons need more glucose so the fdg theoretically reveals which areas are more active than the others if measured at rest we can compare differential baseline activity between pathology and in a cognitive task performance paradigm we can match differential neutral activity with particular cognitive actions and make inferences about what areas of the brain support those actions The major advantage of PET scan is that one can measure brain metabolism both at rest and at activation for example while performing cognitive tasks another advantage is that the radio tracers used are specific and sensitive since they are analogous to chemicals in the brain the limitation however is that the radio tracers have short shelf lives and thus a cyclotron is required which are in turn difficult to maintain secondly it requires a number of corrections due to its vulnerability to movement artifacts detect a cool down or differences in sensitivity and photon scattering rather than traveling at the expected angle This method has been used to examine links between specific psychological processes or disorders and brain activity. Numerous compounds that bind selectively to neuroreceptor of interest in biological psychiatry have been radio labeled with C11 or F18. Radio ligands that bind to dopamine receptors D1, D2, reuptake transporter serotonin receptors 5 HT1A 5 HT2A reuptake transporter opioid receptors MU and other sites have been used successfully in the studies with human subjects studies have been performed to examine the state of the receptors in patients compared to healthy controls in schizophrenia substance abuse mood disorders and other psychiatric conditions single photon emission computed tomography also known as spect single photon emission computed tomography or less commonly spet 
is a nuclear medicine tomographic imaging technique using gamma rays. The basic technique requires injection of the gamma emitting radioisotope also called radionuclide into the bloodstream of the patient. Occasionally, the radioisotope is a symbol soluble dissolved ion such as radioisotope of gallium-3 which happens to also have chemical properties which allow it to be concentrated in ways of medical interest for disease detection. However, much of the time inspect a marker radioisotope which is of interest only for its radioactive properties has been attached to a specialist radiologin which is of interest for its chemical binding properties to certain types of tissues. These combinations allow the ligand and isotope the radiopharmaceutical to be carried and bound to a place of interest in the body which then due to gamma emission of the isotope allows the ligand concentration to be seen by the gamma camera. The method of SPECT is similar to PET in its use of radioactive tracer material and detection of gamma rays in contrast with PET. However, the tracer used in SPECT emits gamma radiation that is measured directly whereas PET tracer emits positrons which annihilate with electrons up to a few millimeters away causing two gamma photons to be emitted in the opposite direction. A PET scanner detects these emissions coincide in time which provides more radiation event localization information and thus higher resolution images than SPECT which has about one centimeter resolution. SPECT scans however are significantly less expensive than PET scans in part because they are able to use long-lived more easily obtained radioisotopes than PET. Thus one of the major advantages is that SPECT is cheaper than PET. Besides SPECT trace radio tracers have long shelf lives and thus don't necessitate an on-site cyclotron. However, it has poorer spatial resolution in comparison with PET. Brain SPECT imaging is indicated for evaluation of cerebral vascular disease, epilepsy, dementia, brain trauma, encephalitis and movement disorder. SPECT used in combination with detailed clinical histories and mental status examination reduces the number of medication trials, identifies unrecognized brain injury, whether traumatic or toxic, and improves patient compliance. Neurological processes underlying many psychiatric disorders have been widely studied. However, the complicated overlapping symptoms make differential diagnosis a challenging task. For example, Patients with ADHD have been consistently demonstrated to have decreased perfusion in the orbital frontal cortex, lateral prefrontal cortex and temporal lobes. These findings are in contrast to those of bipolar disorder which can present with strongly overlapping symptoms. Likewise, depression and dementia may show overlapping symptoms in the aged. The method of functional neuroimaging can differentiate between these disorders. Functional magnetic resonance imaging. In fMRI, the basic technology used is the same as used in MRI. The aim is to collect information regarding the level of oxygen content in the brain tissue at systematically variable times. The fMRI collects data about the functioning neurons and can capture the neuronal function at a fast rate. The biological process behind this is that the greater consumption of glucose 
by active neurons result in a change in the ratio between oxyhemoglobin and deoxyhemoglobin. When neurons are highly activated, the blood capillaries open and release more oxygenated blood. It decreases the relative pressure of deoxygenated blood around these neurons. Deoxyhemoglobin creates magnetic field distortions and the higher presence of oxygenated blood lessens this effect, slightly increasing the magnetic resonance signal. In fMRI, the signal is dependent on higher relative levels of blood. It is termed as blood oxygen level dependent, bold response. The bold response provides indirect measurement of neural activity. The greatest advantage is that this method involves low invasiveness that is no radio tracer. It also has excellent spatial and temporal resolution that can be manipulated to suit the goals of a particular study. The major limitation of this method however is that the bold signal amplitude is not robust and decreases as higher cognitive functions are introduced. Another limitation is that noise is created by thermal fluctuation, head motion, autonomic nervous system changes and unrelated neural activity which can distort the imaging process. Clinicians also use fMRI to anatomically map the brain and detect the effects of tumors, stroke, head and brain injury or diseases such as Alzheimer's. The fMRI is an exciting technique for research as it gives a glimpse of the neural makeup of disorders and help develop strategies to evaluate treatment interventions. Experimental studies which were previously difficult to make like those on cognitive and social processes have all been possible with the use of functional imaging. As we understand more about the neural correlates of normal processing, we also understand abnormal processing of brain networks. The fMRI has been instrumental in probing the regulatory deficits in disorders from mood and anxiety disorders to schizophrenia. Etiological research into the neurological substrate has gained impetus from such studies. Summary Radiological and magnetic imaging techniques involve the use of X-ray radiography and creation of magnetic field to obtain images of the structure and functions of the brain. Structural neuroimaging generates images of the brain's static structure. Current technologies used for this are computed axial tomography CAT and magnetic resonance imaging MRI. Functional neuroimaging is the visualization of the neural activity in specific brain areas in relation to particular mental functions. This includes positron emission tomography PET, single photon emission computed tomography SPECT and functional magnetic resonance imaging fMRI. Use of x-rays is done in CAT scan whereas magnetic fields are created in MRI. The fMRI and PET scan captures the brain metabolic activity and produce images of brain in action. Such techniques have provided great insight into the normal and pathological conditions of the body and the brain.